we were able to finish our final book of the season, our fall season. This is my favorite, my favorite color, color anyways, and, so, and it's my favorite season. So we're thankful that we're able to finish the series. It's, uh, it was a discipline for Mary and I, but we, we loved it. We're thankful, and we are continuing to believe that this is going to bear fruit. We're already hearing some great testimonies of people being touched and being drawn into a deeper relationship with the Lord and a more disciplined life. And so that's that's part of our passion, our heart. So, you know, you already may have that discipline and you're daily in the word, daily praying, daily seeking the Lord. So you may not need a little tool like this, but you may know someone that is, you know, struggling. They kind of have a, you know, relationship on a Sunday and that's about it or whatever. This might be a great tool for you to put in the hands of just encouraging them to daily get in the word because the scriptures are clear. Give us this day. We're acknowledging the Lord daily because without him we can do nothing. We're talking about bearing fruit. He just prayed that and that's our hearts cry. It's the one of the theme verses that the Lord's given me in my life. In this the Father is glorified that we what bear. bear him much fruit so as to be his disciples. If you were to ask me what's your go-to verse, that's it. That's my desire to glorify the Lord. And I know I can do that by bearing much fruit. And I not only know that my call is to bear fruit, but it's to be a disciple which is called to bear fruit. And so that it becomes my prayer, it becomes my mission, it becomes my focus, Lord, to bear fruit. But today I want to talk about guarding that fruit. Because there's a real enemy out there that wants to kill, steal, and destroy. And many of you know, uh, and if you haven't, three weeks ago we were in California and, and we were robbed. And that wasn't a good, dis that wasn't a good experience that we, ha we had. And yet God has turned it around. But I, I want to tell you one other little story. I had this, I have this little tomato plant. You'll get to appreciate this, Brother Cleto. But I only have one this year because uh, I, have a, I used to have a garden where my tomato plants were, but I started planting black raspberries in there, and those black raspberries have taken over. And I'm glad because I love black raspberries. And so, but I didn't have any room to put any tomato, tomato plants this year because I don't have a, one of those tillers yet. Uh, one of my goals. But anyways, uh, uh, so I decided to get a little pot and put that tomato plant in there. And I'm telling you, I, with tender care, I've been watching this little tomato plant. And you know what I do? Brother John, daily, I bring that thing right outside. And I let the sun get on, and I water it. And at nighttime, I bring that plant inside. You know why I bring it inside? Because the deer. So I've been doing this for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. Well, not too long ago, I left it out overnight. And all of a sudden, I panicked. And so I woke up in the morning, and I, oh, my plant. <laughs> it's the first time I come downstairs and check my plant. And uh, it's okay. Hallelujah. I'm so excited. So I, again, I'm just tender, caring for this plant. And, uh, well, two nights later, I forget again. And so I come down again. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Lord. And it was close enough to the house. And I'm thinking, ah, oh, those deer won't come close to the house. So, but I'm still thinking, oh, I'll bring it in, bring it in. But the other night, I thought, I'm not going to bring it in. I think it's fine. I came back the next day. I'm telling you, I had two beautiful, large tomatoes on that plant. Those deer came and pew, gone. And they left the little ones. I was like, ah, I worked so hard. One night, I put my guard down. One night, I thought, ah, it's okay. There was all right over here. One night, bang, gone. 
You know, we're listening, reading an article of a, a minister that's well known, and I won't even name his name, but one picture that was inappropriate has changed his whole career as a minister. One, that quick, suddenly. Temptation, deceit, the enemy. We have got to guard and stay on guard. And so I want to talk about that this morning. And so I'm going to begin by turning to Judges chapter 6 and read a few verses in regards to the judge that was raised up by the name of Gideon. In Judges chapter 6, verse 1, I'm going to begin reading verse 1. It says, Then the children of Israel did evil, listen to this, in the sight of the Lord. Let me just say this. This this is vital. We've got to get the fear of God. In the sight of the Lord. Brother Matthew, in the sight, the Lord sees you. I know that's simple, and yet it's profound sometimes. He sees you. Everything is in the sight of the Lord. The the quicker we get that, the better we're going to be. It's in the sight of the Lord. Your life is in the sight of the Lord. But once you think otherwise, it's slippery. It's dangerous. He doesn't see. It's kind of like what I was thinking... Ah, that dear, he he won't bother me tonight. It's it's wrong thinking. It gets us into trouble. Someone say amen. Amen. In the, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Midians for seven years. Some can look at that as, wow, he's a rough God. Wow, he would deliver them to the enemy? We gotta ask the question why? What is God after? Come on, a good parent in this room. Have you ever loved to spank your child? I hope not. But you understood that if he doesn't get it or she doesn't get it now, the danger of down the road. What would it gain? You gain the whole world, but lose your what? We read in Scripture so clearly, he, he disciplines those he what? Those he loves. So he goes on to say, And the hand of the Midian prevailed against Israel. Because the Midianites, the children of Israel, made for themselves the dens and caves and the strongholds which are in the mountains. So it was, whenever Israel had sown, the Midianites would come up, also the Amalekites and the people of the east, come up against them. Then they would encamp against them and destroy the produce of the earth as far as Gaza and leave no substance for Israel, neither sheep nor ox nor donkey. For they would come up with their livestock and their tents, coming in as numerous as locusts. Both they and their camels were without number. And they would enter the land to destroy it. So Israel was greatly impoverished because of the Midianites and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. But again, I hope you're getting this picture. Very similar to what I was trying to describe. I worked so hard on this little tomato plant. You know, I, 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 in, in this case... More importantly here with Israel, they they were producing, they were working, toiling, and come on, those of us, Cleto, you know, he can tell you, he's got huge gardens in his life. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. 
It's every day. I mean, in the farmer, I live with farmers. You, many of you know, I lived in a place where there were more cows than there were people. There were farms everywhere. For 20 years, we kept saying, oh, God, we, we love the people, but God. But I was around farmers. Man, I, gained, I came to respect farmers. The hard work, the dedication, day in and day out, the discipline, up and down and up and rising and going to bed exhausted, rising up again and getting out there. And It's not like you can take a day off. I knew farmers, they never had a vacation. Incredible. But could you imagine of doing all this work and all this toil only to have the enemy come in and all that you did and say, it's mine. Come on, think about this. To live your whole life and then the enemy to come in and say, it's mine. That's what he does. He's a thief that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. So if you don't learn how to Guard your fruit. You don't recognize the importance of glorifying the Lord. You don't recognize that the, the, everything is in His sight. That you, 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 at the end of the road, you'll miss out. You'll feel the robbery of the enemy of your soul. And we don't want that. Amen? It says, and the children of Israel cried out to the Lord. I just want to say, this is what, the, what the, your, your Lord is after. This is what he's looking for in every one of us. The crying out to the Lord. It's a desperateness. It's a blessed are the poor in spirit. For theirs is the kingdom of God. What is it? It's a, ah, oh, help. I can't do this without you. This is unbearable. I can't make it. God, you see. Come on. Some of us have been in those places. When will he change? When will the situation change? When will the circumstances change? Why will they be so hard? Why are there? Come on. He's looking for us to cry out to the Lord, to cry out to Him. And listen, He allows sometimes even the enemy to come in because we haven't been crying out or looking to the right source. And it came to pass when the children of Israel cried out to the Lord because of the Mennonites, that the Lord sent a prophet to the children of Israel who said to them, Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I brought you up from Egypt. I brought you out of the house of bondage. What's the prophet doing? Bringing them into remembrance of who God is. He's the deliverer. He's the one that's brought you through. He's the one that will keep you. I've delivered you out of the hand of the Egyptians and out of the hand of all who oppressed you and drove you out before you and gave you their land. Also, I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not fear the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But you have not obeyed my voice. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the turbineth tree, which was in Ophrah, which belonged to Joash and Eberzerite, while his son Gideon threshed wheat in the winepress, and get this picture, in order to hide it from the Midianites. Now if you know anything about this threshing that takes place, normally it's a Bang, you get it, it go in, the, in, and you throw it up into the air, and the wind would separate the, the wheat from the shaft. You don't do it in a cave. But why was he in a cave? 
Why was he in this wine press? Hiding. Trying to keep the little bit that he has from the enemy stealing it. Gideon and the Lord, excuse me, let me pick it up. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Gideon said to him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where? are all the miracles which our fathers told us about, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Then the Lord turned to him and said, Go. Everybody say go. Go, go in this might of yours. I'm looking at that and saying, What? Where's the might? <laughs> God saw something. God saw something that, I don't know if it was a determination that the enemy's not getting this. He's not getting this fruit. I'm going to guard this fruit. I'm going to do whatever I need to do that the enemy does not get this. Was that part of it? What, what was it? What, what was there? Something in him that 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 recognized, I'm not giving up. I'm not letting the enemy steal any longer. Go in this might of yours, and you shall save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? I, I believe we have a commissioning on our lives. And sometimes we may not, you know, feel like mighty men of valor or mighty women of valor. But God sees something that maybe you can't see. And I don't believe his commission has changed. As he commissioned the disciples in Matthew 28, and that's in closing, I just want to look at this. Because... I'm convinced in here there's a reminder of how we guard our fruit. He said to the 11 disciples who went away into Galilee, this is Matthew 28, verse 16, to the mountain which Jesus has appointed for them. And when they saw him, what did they do? The Bible says they worshiped him, but some doubted. I want to leave you with three things. How do we guard our fruit? The first one is by staying on point. Stay on point, worship. When you see him, worship him. When you don't even see him, worship him. And you will see him. Because he inhabits the praises of his people. Stay on point of your mission. Remember, he sees all worship him worship him for the simple fact that he sees all and he is worthy of worship i'm convinced because he inhabits the praises of his people he inhabits it he comes in its presence remember the vine and the, and the bearing fruit and, 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 and the words. And John says, and Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. But with him we can do Yes. So in worshiping him, he is making himself known to us. And he is in our presence. And I'm telling you, greater is he that is in us than... He that is in the world. You want to know how to guard your fruit? Worship. Amen. Number two, I leave you with this. Stay on mission. Not only stay on point, but stay on mission. 
And I'm, belie- I'm convinced that mission is to serve. As we see so clearly, and Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority is given to me. And in heaven and on earth, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Serve. To serve is to make disciples. You want to know how to guard your fruit? Be serving. Because that's what will keep you. Listen, think about this. The policeman. The fire, firemen. When danger is all around, where are they going? They're going into the danger. A lot of people that are experiencing it, where are they going? They're getting out. What is it within this that you can tackle fear with running into it because you have a heart to serve. I thank God for our policemen. I thank God for our our, our firemen that are running into danger to serve others and forfeiting the fear in the various things. I believe there's something in there of the principle of the kingdom of God. How do you guard from the enemy stealing your fruit? You maintain a heart to worship and you maintain a mission to serve. And lastly, not only stay on point to worship and stay on mission to serve, but stay on alert. Listen to these words, church. Not only are we commissioned, go, make disciples, but he says these beautiful words, not only teach them to observe all things, but he says this, and lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. I am with you always. You want to know how you're going to keep your fruit? is the more you recognize that armor that He has provided for you. That armor is, He is with me. He is with me. We read this in Ephesians. Finally, my brethren, be strong where? In the Lord. In the power of His might. What is the power of that might? He is with me. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the ages. That's incredible. The more we get that in our spirits, the more our fruit is guarded. He is with me. (laughs) Don't you love that, Elijah? He is with me. That's how I stay alert. As I'm constantly aware of talking to him, walking with him. he, He is with me. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Your fruit will be guarded as you stay alert. If anything out of these situations I mentioned, whether the robbery in California or the robbery in my backyard, my fruit, the Lord is stirring my heart. Alan, stay alert. Stay on mission. Continue to worship me. Continue to trust me. Trust in the Lord with all your... I did that in my devotion this morning. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not what? On your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge Him. That He would direct your path. I, I, I took it from a portion of James where you know someone thought, ah, this, I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll do this. And all this planning but planning without God is futile. That's what James finally says. This kind of boasting that you're going to do this and you're going to do this, it's it's nonsense. It's arrogance. It's pride. And I'm telling you, God's speaking to me in this. Humble yourself. Learn to wait on me. Learn to be sensitive. Learn to listen. Here it is. If If you... If you got anything out of this today, get this. In the sight of the Lord. Come on, He sees it all. And in knowing that in the sight of the Lord, your life is there. 
knowing that your mission is to bear fruit in the sight of the Lord, what are you going to do? I leave you with this. Worship. Serve. Every day, put on the whole armor of God that is going to make you stand against all the wiles of the devil. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's stand together. I'm going to have you stand because we're going to honor a young man of God that we are commissioning today and sending out, go. And I pray this message would encur- has encouraged you, Matt, go in that heart to worship. Go in that heart to serve. And go with that armor of God daily, recognizing there's an enemy that wants to steal your fruit. But guard that fruit. Ultimately, guard that mission to glorify the Lord in all that you do. So, Matt, come on up here and keep your six-foot distance because I don't have my mask on. We love this guy. We're going to greatly, greatly, greatly miss him. I think of the Apostle Paul and the time that they were at the beach and he was telling them that he's got to go. The Bible says they begin to weep. Don't go. Now, in his case, he was heading to his being martyred. (laughs) So we're not, (laughs) you're not going there. Although you are going to be a witness, which is ultimately to lay down your life. We are so thrilled for you, man. We are. That's, That's what... That's what helps this seeing you go is knowing that your heart is to be on mission. And so that for that, we, we say thank you for your example. Thank you for your example up here. Thank you for your heart. I want to thank that wonderful team that was up here today. And I know there was other team members through the years that have supported this guy and stood with him and encouraged him and loved on him and looked over his faults and saw his needs and was gracious to him ultimately. They've grown together. And that's what relationship is all about. Because none of us have arrived. Can you say amen to that? But I thank you, team, that have stood behind this guy prayed for him, encouraged him. So if, if you would, I'm gonna, we're going to pray and commission him in this service. And then Matt's going to go outside. And, and for those that are comfortable enough, we've got little circles out there. They're six feet distance. We invite you to go up to the table if you want a little donut, a little piece of cake there. Or it's a cupcake. That's right, cupcakes. We thought that would be a good way to do it, all individually wrapped there. And so we're doing the best we can here. But there's a little cupcake out there to just... Uh, wave at this guy, just love on this guy because uh, he's going to miss you. He, God's given him a heart and a love for all of us. And so uh, it wasn't just a job of leading worship, but he recognized God gave him a love for the people of Christian Assembly and we thank God for that. So we invite you to go right out those doors and, and greet him on whatever way you're comfortable with and Enjoy a little fellowship before you go, if you're able. So let's just extend a hand towards our brother. Father, again, we thank you for an ear to hear. We thank you for a heart that would respond, here am I, send me. We thank you for the open door that you've clearly made for our Matthew Bellis. And now we just commission him in your name, Lord, that he would go in the power of your might, that he would go with the armor of God, recognizing, lo, you are with him always, even to the end of the age. May he bear you much fruit as so to glorify him. May he be used to impart and encourage and build up many for the glory of God. 
that they would also be fruitful and bear you bear much fruit for your glory. We thank you for him. We send him in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 God bless you, man. Amen. So, Matt, make your way out there so uh, folks can see you as they come through the door. And uh, again, if you're comfortable enough, go on out those doors. Wear your mask, everybody. We'd appreciate that. Uh, unless you get into those circles and you're distancing, then you can uh, put them down or whatever you feel.